Good morning. It's Wednesday, June 7th. We are breaking down today's market action with Jim Kramer on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. And Jim, uh, let's start with your stock picks for the Comey hearing as yes. you outline yes. in real money. Okay, now look, a lot of people are saying, Jim, are you facetious with these 15 stocks? Uh, in many a time in my career in a bull market, there are stocks that people gravitate to and they use them as the uh, go-to names in declines. And I am not being facetious. There have been a series of companies that people have gravitated to, and it's not FANG. And I know a lot of people talk about FANG. I'm glad I created the name FANG, and I had one before that, candies that were quite good. <laughs> um, but this is not an acronym. It's not something fancy. It just happens to be 15 go-to names. I urge people to go look at it. Realmoney.com, yeah. everyone can check it out. All right, Jim, more doom and gloom from the uh, Macy's shareholder meeting. Now that's a tough one, man. I went over the uh, very closely. I went over the, their deck and what they said, and uh, I think it wasn't as bad as people are making. I know Doug Cass is making a case for it. Um, I have no catalyst. I do think that Kohl's is cheaper. Uh, Kohl's went down with Macy's, but people are worried about the gross margins, uh, which means that there's too much inventory. We have a very good article by Brian Salzi on, on this today. If you want to check that out. See, here's the real issue with Macy's. It, it's an issue of relevance. It, it's not necessarily that it's uh, um, at this very moment as the cash flow it clearly does. But if you look at the uh, degradation of Macy's over the course of the last three years, you'll see what is truly to many people a frightening decline. And they don't know how it's going to be reversed versus a Walmart and a Costco, which are a much more uh, the correct pricing for Americans. Uh, and obviously this is uh, being Amazon, apparel, very hard uh, category. Look at how fabulous uh, Mickey Drexler is and what happened to Jay Crew. So uh, Macy's is part of the zeitgeist of what's wrong at the mall. I know that there's a Na NARI conference, that's the National Association of Real Estate Investment Trust, and a lot of these people, including Kimco, are saying, listen, there's not a lot of pressure on rents. Again, we're talking about forward pressure. We're talking about the market being prescient. And uh, again, I didn't think that Macy's was something, I was surprised the virulence of the decline given the fact that there was one page that was bad and the rest of the deck was good. And I didn't know anyone who thought the gross margins were gonna go higher here. Uh, but I think there's still a lot of hot, bad money in Macy's and it's being washed out now. All right, and then what was your reaction to the Tesla shareholder meeting? Look, um, this man uh, is a technology uh, visionary. Okay, and uh, my friend Jay Leno talked about how their cars uh, are a wonder, uh, that, that they're the only car company that's been able to come back, you know, come up since GM, Ford, and Chrysler. And, and what I would emphasize to people is that if you view it as a technology company, it's going to go higher. Uh, if you view it as a short, you're going to get run over. Um, they have enough, as the stock goes higher, they can keep issuing equity to make it so they can pay even for solar, the, that, that solar city acquisition. So. Uh, I know the purists out there hate, hate, hate the financials, but the people who like the car, like my friend Jim Stewart said, want to own the stock. Mm. All right, and then let's move on to two downgrades this morning, BMO downgrading Pepsi and Coca-Cola. Yeah, now look, Coca-Cola's got a new CEO coming in, Quincy, and I think that Mutar Kent gave him a very good hand. They've been, uh, they've refranchised, they're gonna be a very lean company with a lot of cash, buyback stock forever, boost the dividend if they want. PepsiCo, look, I mean, it's been the best performer other than Clorox in the consumer packaged goods business. So it's natural for someone to want to ring the register. My problem with that is there's nothing better than PepsiCo. So uh, as I will probably tell, we have a round table next week for Action Alerts Plus. Uh, I, it's very difficult for me to want to sell. I sold some PepsiCo for the trust uh, not that long ago. Scott Berman and I were just talking about, well, you know what, we're being greedy. But to run from a high quality company just because you think it's gone up too much when you take a longer term view like I have for the trust, that's just not cricket, I can't do it. Right, Jim, I also wanted to get your take on the surge in advanced micro devices. Now, advanced micro, um, Eric Johnson, who is by far the best tech writer in America, I'm not kidding, and he writes for the street, had a really fabulous piece about takeaways with the Apple Worldwide Developers Conference. And his last takeaway was how AMD has gained a lot of market share in the more prosaic Apple products. Uh, and that's a very big deal. Uh, once again, they had an analyst meeting, the company came in with a full head of steam, they have great gaming chips too, Internet of Things, and the analyst meeting ratcheted down expectations. And a lot of people chose, there was a lot of hot money in AMD. 
And when you see that hot money and they don't, they read the headlines and they see what is basically a, uh, a cautionary comment from the CEO, they run. I looked at it as another chance to buy and went out very hard on that. And I continue to think that AMD, uh, which does have a problem, they have a shareholder that's in there that could, uh, I'd say, that could weigh on the stock eventually. But uh, that AMD has a great business model, a fabulous CEO, and the right chips for the right time. And Jim, you mentioned gaming. We know how bullish you are on esports. That's why you talked about interactive, or yeah. excuse me, take two interactive. Take two interactive. Now, like, you know, Strauss Zelnick has to deal with the NBA to have kind of like NBA esport teams. Uh, he also has Red Dead Redemption coming up next year. It's going to be a gigantic theme. Uh, Grand, Th uh, Grand Theft Auto, uh, NBA 2K is incredible. But the note from Morgan Stanley was about EA and about Activision Blizzard, and I have never fought anyone from buying those. So I like all three. It's just that I thought that Take Two was the most. Uh, undervalued at three. Now, Take-Two's had a very big move in part because of the esports deal he made with Adam Silver, but uh, they're all good. And what I do is when one goes down because of the great secular trend of which I still think we're in relative infancy uh, because of the da digital downloads, I tell people to buy them. It is a sainted group, not unlike the humanization of pets group. Mm. These are two themes that I have come back to over and over and over again. You've been talking about that for a while. Yes, I have, Scott. Yes. And then on Stop Trading on Squawk in the Street, you talked about Brown Foreman. Yeah, well, you know, like Brown Foreman has a Tennessee, they have a, the Tennessee Honey, which is up four. They have this fire, which is their kind of fireball answer. Remember, a lot of kids were mixing jazz. I, I say kids, I hate that. Jack Daniels and Fireball, this is their uh, up 14%. Um, I find this to be, unfortunately, a gateway drink for younger people. And I've been adamant. I am, um, I do a lot of, I did a lot of work in my time with D.A.R.E. And I feel like that uh, I do not want to encourage underage drinking. I think it's a, a terrible thing. Uh, I, I sometimes feel that the drinking age has almost made it so that there's underage drinking because the 18, 19, once they turn 21, they don't want to drink it. Uh, they don't want to like play the game because they're like, hey, I've been drinking for a while, but that drink is very hot. And I knew it would be. The underlying numbers of Brown Foreman were better than they look. The stock is up on a takeover talk, so let it come in. But Brown Foreman, this was a very good quarter. I still like Constellation Brands more. I still like a Molson more just because of the consolidation. Uh, Constellation Brands has the, has the really good earnings momentum. I continue from my, and, and you know, when I got involved with Constellation in part because of the Justice Department getting, giving them Modelo and Corona, but then I doubled down when, uh, because of Bar San Miguel when I worked the tap or, or behind, at the bar, I am shocked at Pacifico's sales, at Modelo's sales and Corona sales, and these are the great growth beers. And they bought Casa Noble, which is the great growth tequila at my bar, and they brought uh, High West, which is the great growth high end uh, whiskey, and that is a brilliant acquisition, and they have the best wines. Uh, Prisoner Wine, uh, Opus One, they're doing so much that's right. Rob Sands is the liquor executive of our time. All right, and Jim, we'll end as we always do with earnings to watch. We've got J.M. Smucker. Yeah, look, Smucker, I think, is, uh, they've had a couple of bad quarters. Um, they're, they, had a pet, they had a pet food war. Um, there have been a lot of uh, center aisle problems. I wish they did more with Santa Cruz. Uh, I would uh, buy it after. Um, I know that I uh, did the same with Thor. I mean, uh, you know, it's interesting. I did Thor. I said, you got to wait to see. And I'm tempted to say with Smucker, buy half ahead and, and buy half after. But unlike Thor, the secular trends in food are not that great. I'm working on something about uh, undervaluation of tech versus overvaluation of some of these uh, stocks for my uh my roundtable next week for Action Alerts, so I'm going to be on that. And you are on a roundtable today yes. with some fabulous people, and I look forward to that. Uh, you should tell our, our viewers about who you're talking to because they are uh, unbelievably yes, good. Yes, we have Stephen Sarge Guilfoyle. We have Douglas. My, I start every morning Mark with Sarge. Mark Yep, he's fantastic. We have Douglas Borthwick, Peter Chur, and we have David Yo Williams. Yeah, now David Yo Williams is very funny. The last time I really pushed him on gold, he wanted to do silver. He's remarkable. And, uh, you know, I think that Chur, fixed income, and, and currency sports, I mean, th these are the experts, and I look forward to watching your roundtable. I, um, I, I know that uh, 
I have gotten a lot of good ideas out of it, and so have a lot of other people. So good luck today. Thank you so much. We're going to be talking about how to recession-proof your portfolio. So oh, that's, I like that. I like that very much. That's at 11 a.m. Eastern. And there, I mean, you'll talk bonds. I mean, since we've been doing the roundtables, the tenure has just gone down, down, down in yield. So that's very, very pertinent. And I look forward to some conversation about the euro ahead yes. of the ECB's meeting tomorrow. Absolutely. We'll be watching that as well. Jim Cramer, thank, thank you, you so sir. much. All right, for more information on the stocks Jim mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.